Okay, in this video we're going to look at second order non-homogeneous linear differential equations with constant coefficients and some strategies for solving very special cases of these. So let's break down what this means. So second order differential equations are those where the highest derivative of the dependent variable is the second derivative. So like y double prime would be the largest derivative you would see. Non-homogeneous, so this means um, instead of having zero on one side of the equation, you have something that's not zero on the side of the equation. Linear means that all of the dependent variable and its derivatives are wrapped up in linear functions. Um, and then constant coefficients, it means the coefficients of uh, the dependent variable and its derivatives are constants. So for example, we want to look at differential equations of this form. So we have a y double prime plus b y prime plus c y. So this would be second order with constant coefficients and linear. If this were equal to zero, it would be a homogeneous differential equation. But we want to set this equal to some function f of x. And so this would be a non-homogeneous differential equation. And so in this setup, we have a, b, and c are real numbers. And we also have f is some function. And this is called a forcing function. Okay, good. So now the first thing that we'll do is observe that even though this is a non-homogeneous differential equation, the solutions to the corresponding homogeneous differential equation uh, are also important. So uh, let's call ay double prime plus by prime plus cy equals zero uh, the corresponding um, homogeneous differential equation, which we know how to solve. It has something to do with the roots of this polynomial. So we'll look at an example at the end, but we know how to solve this. And uh, let's look at the following observation. So if um, yp is a solution to, and so let's label this thing one, so our non-homogeneous differential equation is one, and yh is a solution to um, the corresponding homogeneous differential equation. Then, uh, let's call it capital Y, which equals YH plus YP is a solution to one. Okay, good. So uh, we won't do the proof, but we'll like sketch the proof here. And it has to do with the fact that um, plugging in a function here is like some sort of linear type operation. So if we plug capital Y into this uh, number one equation, we can split that up into YH and uh, YP. So we have A YH double prime plus B YH prime plus C YH. And we know that's zero because it's the solution to this equation. And then we have the same thing for YP. And we know that's equal to F of X because that's our um, assumption. So in other words, if we have something called a particular solution to this non-homogeneous differential equation, and we have something called a homogeneous solution to a corresponding equation, then if we take their sum, that's also a solution to this non-homogeneous differential equation. Okay, so I'll clean up this board and we'll look at the first special case of forcing functions that we'll be able to solve for. Okay, I've cleaned up the board a little bit, and now what we want to talk about is what values for this function do we want to 
take um, so that this differential equation is e as easy to solve as possible. So later we'll look at um, more general types of functions, but here we want to look at very specific functions. And what we want to look at is uh, functions f of x such that when you take the derivatives, um, it's some, it forms some sort of closed set, such that uh, taking derivatives forms a closed set. So, for example, this will be like three main um, families. So, if we take exponential functions, so for example, e to the kx, so if we take the derivative of that, we get ke to the kx, which is essentially the same as e to the kx. We've just multiplied by the number k. So here we have some sort of closed set. They're all just the original exponential function. So exponential functions would be an allowable type of function to look at um, initially. And so um, the next family are trig functions, but not all trig functions mostly just sines and cosines and that comes from the fact that when you take the derivative of sine of x you end up with cosine of x you take the derivative of that you get negative sine of x you take the derivative of that you get negative cosine of x and then you're back to sine of x so you form a closed set under taking derivatives of this sine function now the same is not true for something like tangent. If you take the derivative of tangent, you get secant squared. If you take the derivative of secant squared, well, you have to use the chain rule, but you get something like secant times tangent. If you take the derivative, it just keeps exploding. And you'll see that it'll never form a closed set. You'll get some sort of infinite set after taking um, lots of derivatives. Good. And then the next thing is polynomials. And this comes from the fact that if you take the derivative of x to the n, you get n times x to the n minus 1, and then finally you'll get 0 at the end. So if you take repeated derivatives of polynomials, you'll eventually get down to 0. Okay, good. So uh, let's like clean up the board and then we'll look at our first example of a non-homogeneous linear differential equation. Okay, so the first example that we'll look at is as follows. So y double prime plus 3y prime, prime plus 2y equals e to the x. So previously we showed that the homogeneous differential equation um, and its solution play an important role here. So we'll look at that, for that first. So let's look at the corresponding homogeneous differential equation, which is given by y double prime plus 3y prime plus 2y equals zero. And we know like looking at roots of this polynomial, u squared plus 3u plus 2 is important. So we can set that equal to zero and then factor, notice that factors like u plus 2, u plus 1 equals zero, which tells us that the roots are negative 2 and negative 1, which means our homogeneous solution is c1 e to the minus 2x plus c2 e to the minus x. Again, by the theory of homogeneous linear differential equations. Good. And now, because exponential functions close under taking derivatives, that tells us that a good guess for the particular solution would be some constant times e to the x. And in general, this strategy is called the method of undetermined coefficients. And we'll look at a bunch of other examples in forthcoming videos. So let's guess that we have that solution where a is an undetermined constant. And notice that gives us yp prime is equal to a e to the x and yp double prime equals a e to the x. So there's nothing really going on there. It's easy to take the derivatives. Now if we plug this into the original differential equation, that will give us a e to the x plus 3a e to the x plus 2a e to the x equals e to the x. Good. 
Now, notice that gives us 6a e to the x equals e to the x, which tells us that a equals 1 over 6. Fantastic. So that means our particular solution is 1 over 6 e to the x. And then from before, we saw that our general solution will be made up of the homogeneous part and the particular part. So that means our general solution is given by y equals um, c1 e to the minus 2x plus c2 e to the minus x plus 1 over 6 e to the x. And that's the final answer.